Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can obtain these results for small angles. If theta is a small angle measured in radians, then I'm going to show you that sine theta is approximately the same as theta, tan theta is approximately the same as theta, and cosine of theta is approximately the same as 1 minus theta squared over 2. Now these results are very useful when we want to find limits of other trigonometric functions. So if you want to know the proof, I'll take you through the proof. Now, one way we can work out these approximations is by taking a circle of radius r center O. And if I let the angle between OA and OC be theta radians, then by drawing the tangent at A, and seeing where it intersects the line OC produced, say at B, we get a right angle triangle, OAB. Now by considering various areas, I can form this inequality here. The area of triangle OAB is clearly larger than the area of the sector OAC, which in turn is larger than the area of triangle OAC. So we've got this inequality here. Now if we look at the area of triangle OAB, then I need this side here, AB, in order to do it. And I can use basic trigonometry to get that length. We know that the tan of angle theta, remember theta is given in radians, is equal to the opposite side, AB, divided by the adjacent side, which will be R. And Rearranging this, I can therefore get that AB must be equal to R times the tan of angle theta. So when it comes to working out the area of the triangle OAB, it will be half the base, which I could take as R, half R times the height, which would be R tan theta. So putting that together, the area of triangle OAB is going to be a half R squared times the tan of angle theta. And that's going to be greater than the area of the sector, OAC. And the area of a sector, when theta is in radians, is a half r squared theta. And this area is greater than the area of triangle OAC. Well, for triangle OAC, I've got two sides and the included angle. So I can use the formula half of the product of those two sides, that's r times r, r squared, times the sine of the included angle, which will be theta. Now if I divide each of these terms by half r squared, then I'm therefore left with tan theta is greater than theta is greater than sine theta. And this is an inequality which I'm going to be coming back to. So I'll number it 1. So from 1, what I'm going to do first of all is to divide through by sine theta. So by dividing by sine theta, knowing that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, if I divide that by sine theta, I'm just left with 1 over the cosine of angle theta. Dividing theta by sine theta is just going to give me theta over sine theta. And then this is going to be greater than sine theta divided by sine theta, which is 1. Now, what we're looking at is small angles. So what I'm going to do is consider what happens as the angle theta tends to 0. Well, cosine theta tends to 1 when that's the case. So we should know that. So cosine theta tends to 1. So what happens to 1 divided by cosine theta? We can write that as the limit as theta tends to 0 of 1 over cosine theta. Well, we're going to get 1 over 1, which is going to tend to 1. So that means that we've got 1 here is greater than theta over sine theta is greater than 1. 
So it must mean that this quantity here, theta over sine theta, must tend to 1 if it's between those two inequalities. So writing that down, first of all, we got theta over sine theta must tend to 1. And if that's tending to 1, then theta must be approximately sine theta. So therefore, we end up with the result that sine theta for small angles is going to be approximately the same as theta, where theta is measured in radians. OK, well, we've got one small approximation result then. Sine theta is approximately the same as theta. Now, you can use a calculator to check this out. Just make sure that you're in radians mode. So I'll just put this for this calculator in radians mode. And then let's say we take a small angle, 0.1 radians, for instance. So if I do the sine of 0.1 radians, do I get back 0.1? Let's just see. Nearly 0.0998 and so on. So do play around with this. Try some small angles yourself and see how close they get to your angle here, these approximations. Now I want to show you next how we get the small approximation for tan theta. And to do that, we're just going to go back to our inequality we've got up here from 1. And this time, instead of dividing through by sine theta, as we did over here, let's divide through by tan theta. And so, therefore, this time we end up with tan theta divided by tan theta, which is 1. And that's going to be greater than theta divided by tan theta, which in turn is going to be greater than sine theta divided by tan theta. But tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, so we end up with just cosine of theta. Now I'm just going to do the same as we did before, and that's let theta tend to zero, become very small. We know that the cosine of theta tends towards one. So we've got this term here sandwiched between one and one. So, in other words, as theta gets small, tends to zero, this term here must tend to 1. So we've got, therefore, the limit as theta tends to zero for that term, theta divided by tan theta, that's going to tend towards 1. And that means that these two terms here, theta and tan theta, must be much the same. So we can therefore say that tan theta for small angles will be approximately the same as angle theta. And check this one out on your calculator in much the same way as you showed sine theta was approximately the same as theta. Now the last one I want to work on is trying to find an approximation for cosine theta. And we do that knowing that cosine of theta is related to the sine of theta. Remember, if we use the identity cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1, then rearranging that, I get cos theta is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So what we've got here for small angles is that we know that sine theta is roughly theta. So we can say that this is equal to the square root of 1 minus theta squared. And for the square root, I'm just going to put that to the power half. And using the binomial expansion for this, we end up with 1 minus a half theta squared minus theta to the power 4 over 8. And it's going to go on like that and so on. Now, if theta is small and we ignore terms like theta to the power 4, because that's going to be negligible in comparison to this term here, if we ignore terms above theta squared, then this reduces down to 1 minus theta squared over 2. And I'll just put here 
for small theta, okay, for small theta. That's if we ignore terms above theta squared. So we've got an approximation for cos theta. We can say that this is approximately then the same as 1 minus theta squared over 2. So in summary then, We've got for small theta, remember it must be measured in radians. We've seen that sine theta is approximately the same as theta, tan theta is approximately the same as theta, and cosine theta is approximately 1 minus theta squared over 2. Now in my next video, what I'll be doing is applying these small angle approximations for sine theta, tan theta and cos theta in other trigonometric functions. So I hope you'll have a look at that video because they're the kind of questions you're likely to get that use these particular results.